Rising Investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here. Tiger Technicians Hour on the 17th, Monday, the 17th of July. We're now into the second part of July. Let's see what happens. What's happening right now is actually not bad considering what happened Friday. So let me just show you on the one minute chart, we've got a peak D in the one minute chart. Beautiful cup formation, left side, right side, price time match, bar symmetry. We've got uh, leg C in the 10-minute chart because this is pattern right here with the cup formation taking out sharply the left side high of about uh, 4 o'clock this morning, just after 4 at 45, 39.25, 4.30 <clears throat> this morning in the Eastern time. Uh, that usually goes to, uh, it's a Chapman Wave cup and ladle breakout, one of my favorite patterns because Unlike the cup and ladle, which a cup and handle, which has this cup, and then you make the a test of the left side lip, then you fail, and you got to make the little handle. Finally, you recognize because it's breaking out to the upside that it's doing well, and inevitably the handle comes back and goes right. Price goes right back into the handle. This is different. This one says that if you take out the left side high, at a, in a leg C. There's a really good chance you're going to take it and go to a leg D. If you take it down a leg B, you should still be making a peak B and then a higher leg C and even a leg D and then come back at some point and retest, the, in this case, the cup handle, sorry, the left side high at 4.30 this morning at 45.39.25. All right, let's get out of the way here and let's go straight to the major charts if you want to look at here. We're looking at pretty much the same sort of thing. There was a beautiful, oh, I haven't got it on this one. I have it in all the others. Oh, that's right. I lost my, some of my data. Because I, I, want, I don't know what's happening lately. It's really tough. I'm out of town doing this remotely, and there's a really good chance that if I lose my uh, all this information because it's on my office computer, uh, it's going to be a problem. I'll, I have someone ready to go there to, to my office to open it up to to. Press just all they have to do is press the button for the computer to get back online again. But wow, I don't want to do that. So, cup formation really two U shaped patterns like a W in the down, the daily chart. The objective in the Chapman wave is to identify the lowest low bar and count each successively peak. When you get to the fourth highest peak, peak A is the first, B is the second, C is the third, fourth is D. Other things can happen. That's all you have to say. Other things, and it doesn't mean, oh my God, thing. But this is also where I'm looking at a, a bunch of factors, and let me go through them. Number one, the Dow has made the potential, just the potential for a short term in the daily chart. Let's skip the weekly just for the moment. This left side chart, the daily chart, to make some kind of a, a, a top to go into the rectangle formation to sort of pull back and retest the 34,200 level, which would be the midpoint, uh, maybe just about 34,150, would be the midpoint of this large, not narrow, but large rectangle at this particular time, number one. Number two is if there's a break to the upside, that would augur very well for the near term to say that all the, 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 all the potential negatives are being ameliorated by price movement to the upside. But I need, and I'll talk about that in a moment, I need the semiconductors, I need some other things to confirm that we're going even higher. Ha, huh, number one. Number two is, within the context of my 914s, there isn't even a hint yet that the 9 has gone underneath the 14 because it's the 9 period, this green 9 period daily EMA is above the 14 period moving average. That's why it's green. But if you look at the MACD, the MACD is kind of struggling. Yes, it's positive, but it's not anywhere close as good as it was when it made the high of the 16th of June at 34,588. The other thing is the stochastic is at 82%. So actually, if you're looking at all the technicals except for the on-balance volume, which is really lagging, lagging means, wow, that means that if it's going to get you an overbought level, you've got, a, you've got way more to go on the upside. 
On the other hand, it's also saying there's a divergence here between the volume, the on-balance volume. The volume itself is, is giving almost the same kind of clues to say there isn't volume strength to say that buying has come in to do anything other than to hold the price up at this particular point. Whether it's a snap through to the 34,800s, which would be really good action, we're at 34,520 uh, right now, we'll see. Weekly chart, everything here in the weekly charts, everything is very positive. It's not a fantastic price movement, but the technicals are all very good. Monthly charts improving. All right, now we can go to quickly, quickly through the others. SPX.X, here we go. This is the S&P. Lower high today than on Friday at 45.10, up 5. Uh, weekly charts, spectacular. Monthly charts, breaking to a leg. See, there... No, I'm not going into that right now. Let's give it a couple of days and then we can talk about it. What I wanted to say is that in the daily chart, the MACD is good, but not as good as it was back at the high that was made back on the 16th of June. The on-balance volume turned down sharply right at that moment and has come back, but it's still weaker than it was, but it's still way better. It's just a huge – I haven't seen a divergence like this between the down the S&P on the on-balance volume going to new recovery highs. The uh, where was it? Uh, the relative strength is still pretty good. That's actually it's very good right now at about 78. And uh, nine is way over the 14 prices, way over the nine. Nine is over the uh, um, and the uh, where was the other that I was looking at? Oh, and look that gap. There were two gaps and they haven't been filled yet. So I'm watching this very closely to say, is there just a very momentary digestive phase? And then boom, Wednesday, Thursday, whew, we shoot up into the uh, uh, 45, 28, 45, 32 area. I don't know yet. All I'm saying is this is where I've become a little bit cautious, especially a, a leg E in the weekly, in the daily chart of the S&P. But the monthly is still fabulous and the weekly is still great. Let's go to the QQQ. And he has a, this is interesting. The S&P is up 0 0.14, 0.14%. S&P is up 0.30%, 03 and it's up a dollar twenty at three eighty point two six. Kind of struggling to get above yesterday's uh, Friday's high, and that Friday had um, an evening start or, or a, a hammer, a downside hammer candle. So, I, in this particular instance, the candle is not as important as the Doji candle right here four days ago, four sessions ago, where we did almost a one to one to the upside. Does that mean that thirty uh, seven? 73 is kind of a target on the downside if there is a pullback. Well, that would be the start, but we haven't even seen anything yet to say, hey, 89% on this on the stochastic is fabulous. So really good action. I'm just saying that based on a couple of aspects that I use as gauges for momentum to the upside, I see a slowing down and how, how there's a recovery in those particular indexes going to be uh, tools. Are going to be very important. Really strong IWM today. One six up one sixty four at one ninety three eighteen. Not a great candle on Friday. It didn't quite fill the gap from I think it was Wednesday or so of last week. Now Thursday, uh, Tuesday of last week. Weekly charts improving, monthly charts improving, but there's a lot of work to say. Hey, the small caps are going to start leading now. I want you to do this quickly. Just XLI. That's the real uh, industrials. S P Select Industrial Spider Fund. It's up 19 cents to 108.80. But look, it hasn't broken above that high that was in the 110 area just a few sessions ago, actually last week. And it's kind of struggling a little bit, and there's a store click formation in the week chart. <laughs> it's worth talking about. I'll be back in a moment, Basil. Thank you. Now it's up, uh, up something. I'll be right. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. I know, so the XLI is the real industrial. See, way more industrial than the Dow itself, the Dow 30. The Dow has a handful, if that. Um, we're looking at the XLI up 17 cents at 108.79. <clears throat> Look at the monthly. 107.86 was the high January of 2022. It drops down to the 80 level, and then it rallies back. 20 points, about almost 30%. But that's not the issue. The issue is that it's made an all-time high. When you make an all-time high after a bear market move, going uh, down 25, let's see, so that's, uh, let's call it 28%. Uh, that is a, re that's quite something. 20, actually, it's almost more. So what we're looking at in this particular instance is um, the, Heads up to say, within the context of the overall market, the industrials have found enough strength to not only move very well from the consolidation phase, this whole consolidation phase going to 2023 and then into the beginning of 2023 with an oval pattern. And this is a pattern that I call the Chapman Wave Stork Leg Formation. Uh, you see this here? This is where it looks. You've got, you know, a stalk stands on one leg and it tucks the other leg underneath. And you've got this long oval body and somehow or other this thin spindly little leg holds it up. Of course, it has to do with, um, um, besides gravity, it has to do with the distribution of weight. That's not the point. In this particular instance, the, the leg is right by the tail, so it doesn't fit. I'm just saying, when I first discovered this way back, I think it was 19, in the 19, late 1970s, um, I, I, I used to, when I was hand charting, I discovered this pattern. I said, gee, this looks like a stalk. And then what happened is I found over and over again, and I only use it on the Dow, 
But I, after a while, I started using it in other, other areas because a pattern is a pattern is a pattern. So what happened is if you get this oval pattern and then break to the upside, there's a good chance that that starts the leg. So this is the first leg. This is the oval body. It's always an oval. It's never a rectangle, and it has to be an oval. It has to look like an oval, act like an oval, and be an oval. And then what happens is at that peak, usually a D, when it pops up above that, that becomes the neck. And then that neck, when there's a failure, it goes to the beak. And that beak very often pulls back and it tests the uh, upside of the oval, which was on the week of the th uh, this is the week of the 10th of March at 104.18. Well, lo and behold, this pullback right here went to 102.91. Now, I had a trouble saying, is, is that the beak? I like it to look like it's supposed to look. So I decided I will just put the beak in here and I'll put the I'll keep the neck, the pink neck. I used to use pink as the, uh, the template that I use for this pattern that goes leg, body, oval body, neck, and beak. And the rule of thumb is... If the beak comes down, and I haven't yet quite identified that either of these are the beak coming down like that, it could technically be. Sometimes you get a very small neck and beak. But in this particular case, I said, I'm just going to keep it there because why? It's telling me that there's still strength and that eventually when this does turn down, this particular peak did, one of what did I say? It was 104.18 or something. Yeah, 104.18 becomes the focal point. Here we are at 108.77. So this pattern is intact. The, this is the weekly. The nine is the price is way over the nine. Nine is way over the fourteen. Uh, MACD is expanding. It's still very strong. This is the industrial select industrial spider fund, and within that context, you've got a flat stochastic at 88 percent. On balance firms a tad overbought, but still holding very. <laughs> very nicely. Um, so this pattern says, just be careful. Don't get too carried away about thinking short, other than very short, briefly for a kind of an intra, intra week, maybe pullback. We'll see. And here it is at leg C. And I have to, at this point, I have to consider that it could be an alternate count because here's your starting point way down here at 47, was it? Can't remember now. Uh, 4771. On the March March of 2020, that's when we actually went along the diamonds and the, and uh, had a fabulous move to the upside, um, and, so, and we're still long in that position. The diamonds. Now look at this: 107.88 pulls back. I don't want to do a fib number here, but that fib looks like it's just under. Um, it, it doesn't quite make 50 percent, but a nice move up, and this is an all-time high. So there's something very different at what's going on here. I want you to talk about that. I want you to quickly go to the SMHs. That's the semiconductor index because that, for me, that's always very important to monitor because that's the area that I always consider is, is the oil industry of the 1900s that feeds everything. The chip industry just now feeds everything. It's as important as oil used to be. And within that context, we made an east slash C at 160.70 on Friday. Ugly, uh, not an ugly candle, but an ugly finish to the day because it looked very good and then it finished red. And today it's running a little bit of stuff, 47 cents at 157.37. Nicely over the nine, nine's nicely over the 14. The MACD is only just barely turned positive, and the stochastic's good at 85%. Relative strength is good, and the on-balance volumes pull back a little bit. And the weekly chart had that beautiful, I don't want to go through it again. I did it all of last week. Beautiful price movement, left side, right side, price time match, bar symmetry, we call it. Look at that beautiful cup formation. You even consider that there are a whole bunch of inverted head and shoulders patterns with this being the neckline. I don't want to go there just yet. I think later on it's going to be very important. So that's the semiconductor index. So the question came in. Um, I, oh, the other thing also, the XL, XLK. This is the tech, S&P Select Tech Spider Fund. All-time high on Friday. All-time all high, 177.04 December of uh, 2021. Friday goes to 178.07, trading now just down a little bit from that, but up 89 cents. So all of these say, Technicals are pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Now, most importantly, what we want to look at is um, go back here to the gold. Gold is pulling back. It's now down 8 
But it's it's look, the nine's still positive over the fourteen. Magni's expanding. Stochastic's good at ninety percent. I don't see anything here other than a little digester phase. I actually kind of like on the shorter term. I like the the gold. Uh, go to the GDX. A little bit different pattern. Uh, it's down just a penny at thirty one ninety five. Uh, a little bit different because of the left side highs of 32.58 it was made earlier on uh, a, couple, a couple of weeks ago and it got close to it now it's pulling back but that weekly chart that needs a lot to change flip from pink to green in the nine period moving average and that would take a, probably a move to, into the either concerted daily move or just one big spike into the 32.90 to 33.10 area okay silver uh, silver, we discussed silver as being a little different to gold, pulling back a little bit today. Big strong leg C, much better chart pattern uh, at 25.01. Uh, let me just do this quickly. The dollar, it's a Monday, so I can go through everything as a review and a look look ahead. Uh, up 18 ticks at 100.07 at a big smash. It's got two weeks in which to get back above the 101, was it? Let me just get that right. Yeah, into the 101 area, and right now it's at 100.07 uh, to save the day in this H to an M pad. Just do this very quickly. Look at the ER, here we see, here we go. Big uh, beat, the day to day, weekly. I'll be right back. How's it going? Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors.
Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. Let me just show you this. We're back. Uh, this is the SPM Pink 45 for the whole even. So I would like to get this thing ran out of the bits of this particular pullback. And I'll join a rectangle. That's number one. Number two is I can't yet put a down arrow because the price hasn't closed underneath the 14 period moving average with the nine period turning pink. It has its very second. So give it a chance. We'll see what happens there. Technically, the MACDs turned down stochastic sharply low. On balance volume is holding beautifully. And that together with the uh, 914 is holding it up. But we did get a peak C1, C2. In other words, almost an exact double top in the 10-minute chart. It could still go to a D, but this is what I'm looking at. I'm saying this is where you've got to start being a little bit careful. Just I'm talking about a one-minute chart, skipping over to the 10. I could put the 5. I don't want to do that right now. I don't want to take the time. This C1, C2 is still seeing nine. the price way over the 9, 9 way over the 14. MACD, good. The stochastic at 88% strong. on bounds volume did pull back a little bit in corresponding to the to the short-term uh, timeout. It's not a, even a pullback. It's just a timeout. So we'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, and there was a left-side, right-side price timeout. So I don't want to get into that. So the euro is in leg D. But look at the beautiful symmetry of this cup formation, a rising cup formation. And it's broken out above it. And so far, it's still above it. But it is leg D, and we have gone to a higher high this week. So this continues for the weekly chart to be there. Anything can happen. The D could go all the way back in the daily. Down, to, it's at 1.12 right now for the euro. Uh, the euro could go all the way to 1.10. And that will still be a weekly leg D until next week. You have to wait now two weeks before you can get a confirmation that Friday is close, whether this is going to be a peak D. Why? Because if it closes sharply over on Friday, this coming Friday, it's still made a higher high on the weekly chart. And look at the legs C in the monthly chart, starting to improve a lot, getting towards the jam wave inside track, repellent zone. Look at the USD JPY. USD JPY. Yes, I got those questions. I'm going to get to those questions. I also wanted to ask you in the den a favor. Anyone who's asked questions, I, I did get the D-Dog one. Um, Anyone who's got any questions, could you retype them? It's just uh, I don't want to take too much time scrolling because I've been using only one instead of my usual four or five monitors. I just got this one uh, laptop right now. So, okay. So the USD as uh, the US dollar Japanese yen is an attempt to rally right now. It's up at 138.08, up 0.28. That's not bad. Weekly chart peaks. It has all the characteristics here of a D, but it's a C and it's pulling back. Monthly chart looks like a right arm, fa a right shoulder failure. This is like peak A, peak B. That's the dreaded H. We'll see if that happens. I'm just saying these are things that could happen right now. There's an attempt from nowhere on the left side. Uh, is even a trough. The, the next trough is at 136.46. Uh, one. I'm sorry, 138.46. 138.46. So we're at 139.064 at this particular point. So it's very, it's, it, we, we, we're close. Um, so that's that. Look at the TLT. TLT is bonds down 19 ticks at 101.10. We went underneath the left side low in the dreaded H that goes to a lowercase m. And We've gone right back into that candle. And I think this is the way it's going to be. We are making lower lows and lower highs. So we've got to be aware that there's a possibility that the price of the bonds, the TLT, goes down and the yields go up. But at this particular point, it's just back in the range. And I've been saying for quite a while, my impression of this particular chart formation is that we will stay in the range for quite a bit, and we have done that for weeks. We'll see if that's going to change. One other thing, yes, crude oil, you'll see we've got that same pattern in the crude oil. Lowercase h goes to lowercase m over there, and we're in the range, and it's trading at 74.93. The 200 period moving average is at 70, if I can read this thing, 76.68. 
So it's just, it, it, it's being repelled at that 200 period moving average. All right, I did that, did that, did that, did that, that. Okay, D dog. So this is data dog, D O D, uh, D D O G is the symbol up four at 112.53. This is really good action. This is still a leg C. Entry point. I spoke about this earlier, and I think I said to start the position about four or five sessions ago uh, in D dog, because it, it all the technicals were good, but there was a risk reward that made made a fairly tight stop necessary, but that didn't that wasn't necessary because it's done very well. Now let me just lift this up to show you. There's the B. There's the left side, right side price time match in the cup formation. This is this is the, the yeah, This is not quite the Chap Wave Cup and ladle breakout pattern because it's more rectangle breakout, but it is almost like a head and shoulders. Nice move up. We've gone more than we've gone almost one to one to the upside. It's in leg C. What I'm going to recommend is that even though there's a chance and if you, you remember when we are looking at the potential for really sharp moves to the downside. I'm gonna mention this one more time today. First time today. Here we go. Until or if this particular pattern right here, what is this? This is oh, this is um, Marriott Hotel. Look at that, walking the nine period moving average so nice. That's also a very positive sign. So if in this particular chart formation we start to break sharply to the upside, that just leaves alone this entire dark news cloud cover. And my impression of this whole thing right now is that unless the S and P really was down 45 to 50 points with the S with the Dow down 380 to maybe 420, and it should be almost at the open because over the weekend there was just such bad news, bad economic news. Until we get that, I don't think we're doing anything other than having digestive consolidations. That's the way I'm looking at it. In fact, one of the things we're looking at here is having a bit of a pullback, and then I'll be looking to get back into the three times long down, the UDOW. And we are in it, but this is as, as a shorter term trade. So within that context, D Dog is going on its own momentum to the upside very powerfully, and I would not fight that at all. So 113, 17, if you're not in it, if you're looking to add to it's much better. If you're already in it, I know two people are in it that have asked me. One, I'm not sure if they're in it already, but where to get in right here at 113, 12, but it's a short-term trading position. So you have to make do the measurement yourself. How much? What am I, What is my stop? I'd have a fairly tight stop. Why? Because this leg C should pull back. I, I could call it an alternate count. I just don't see any reason why. All the technicals are strong. So calling it a leg C, 113.17. Um, get your, get this as a trading position. I'd have a tight. I'm making a two-point stop initially. But if at any point, see on the left side, You've got it's so much control. You know, you've got to go to 200 area. Yeah, you are at 113. So this is your target. If there is a target, it would be 115.53 on the left side. And we're already at 113.20. So you've got to treat that as a very short-term trade. And tomorrow, if everything's holding well through the close, it's got to be through the close today, then I'll start talk to you, talking to you about... The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com.
Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks, we're back. Uh, no, let me just check to see what was I saying before I, I overstepped my mark and the. Uh, so a question came in, could I look at COF, which is uh, Capital One Financial, uh, you know, all those commercials, Capital One, Capital One, Capital One, and here we are, peak C, I'm actually, for now, I'm going to call it a C1, C2, it's not quite exactly that, but it's so close that I'm going to call it a peak C1, C2 in the, uh, we, we got it right there, in the monthly chart. So this is a brand new leg A, gray leg A, because I know the technicals are strong. So this is just the start, the start of a bounce in the monthly chart. Weekly chart's gone a little stronger. I can actually call it a buy signal. I haven't yet. I have to wait for the full week to complete. But a buy signal in the weekly chart uh, made a leg B on Friday, and it's trading at 112.89, up a dollar 14. C O F is the symbol, and there's a really nice cup. And it's a sym symmetrical uh, right there. Let me see if I can get that organized right there. Look, here it is. I'm going to go to the doji candle right here. Go to the right. So this is saying it's acted really well. It's had a nice digestive phase. It's still digesting. And I do have a, an alternate count because there was an instant restart at that peak D right here. So that means that G has to have a G slash C because you've got to be prepared that there could be a retest of the highs. That's the characteristic over the last two years. I've been making a little bit of a change to my methodology saying when you get an instant restart, if you go to a G, always put G slash C to say, hey, uh, but wait a minute. Is that 114.91, 114.91? Ninety-two. Yes, my eye said there was a penny difference, and that's it. So that is a D slash B. D says it's finishing up the old move. B says, "Oh, brand new move." So the nine is it's over the nine. Nine is over the fourteen. Macdies, mm, okay, not great, but it is good. And the stochastics nice at eighty-one percent. On balance volumes a tad overbought, but not anywhere where it was before back in June when it was going to the hundred fourteen area. So, so the question is. Could I look at it? Or is it a question of um, what do you do? Well, I'm going to do it as if I'm looking at it fresh and someone said to me, what do you think of COF? Would you buy, sell, or hold? <clears throat> this is where I want to get a big picture. 
So I'm going to go to the weekly chart right here. And the weekly chart says, yes, it's walking the nine period moving average. Uh, it's going into this long, this kind of cup. It's more like a ball formation, but it goes all the way back. I'm going to just put it for the moment to there and show you that this is the pattern that I'm looking at. It's a ball pattern. Basically, there's a rectangle, narrower, lower down, that goes from there to there. And we've got to look at what's happening in the middle of this rectangle. And the, the, the idea is that the nine's acting well. Uh, everything about this uh, weekly chart, the MACD is good, the casting is good, says it should continue to walk, but even though it's struggling to make higher highs, as long as that nine is uh, good, that's, that's really important. That's, that's the weekly. Monthly chart, I don't want to do anything with now because we have to wait for the month to close. So the daily chart is the one that says to me, it's a bit of a struggle. And then if you were to get in right now, yes, it could pop to 116. Nice, three points, good. But at, everything about it says that there's a really good chance that there's enough selling pressure to keep it contained within this rectangle formation a little while longer, maybe another week because it keeps doing that. It makes a peak and then it has a little bit of a timeout. So I'm just going to say let's – if I was looking at it on a weekly basis and I was saying what would I do, and I know that you do use options, I would get a call position, 115 call position for August. Just give it time. But I'd have it only in proportion to the risk that you want to take. I wouldn't say this is the big move. It's going to spike to the upside, go to the 120. I know that would be your area. But you've got to consider that these digestive phases, especially in the financial area, financial stocks, have often lasted quite a while. So that's why I'm saying August. Okay? Now, on price alone, I just say to you, if all of this week – it does not close. It can go under it, but it mustn't close under 109. That's just three points, three, four points below. But instead holds you and actually nicks the high and goes to 115.15, starts to actually trade in the 115 area. That, I think, on a very short basis is very good, and then that will also help the weekly. So here's my idea. I, I know that you have – a couple of people have asked me. I have a sense of both uh, – there are two ways of doing it. One is that option area, and the other is just start your position here at 112.90. I think Bank of America, I thought it was going to be today, but maybe it's not today, maybe it's tomorrow or the next day. Bank of America is acting, it's gone sideways, it's not doing that much, it's kind of, it's actually acting okay, but actually it's poorly. If you had to say to it, look at the market, what the market's said, this is a really, it's just not participating. If you look at the XLF, and I don't, th I don't know, maybe COF is in the XLF. That's acting very nicely today, and on a weekly basis is starting to make higher highs. So it's very selective. And look at the chart here on the in the middle, the weekly chart, and look at COF weekly chart. Keep your eye on this one. Big rectangle with a big red bar, but it's filling that big red candle. And this one is doing. A similar type thing, but it didn't have a single move down. It just had red candles for about two weeks. Oh, two weeks. For one, two, three, four, five, six, seven weeks. For seven weeks. So this action now, taking 15 or 16 weeks to move up, steady move up, it says any bad news and it's going to be pulling back. But if you just put in a stop, I don't think you have to worry about that. So I'm going to say start a small position in CF. Because you discussed it, my idea is that um, it's, on, it's on your watch list and it's something that you're interested in. I don't think you're looking at it as a short, although I would, I'd certainly do an analysis as if it was a short. A short would say if it closes – Three out of four sessions, usually I say two out of three, I can't, I'm going to say three out of four sessions at any time in July. I'm giving it the whole two weeks to go. Under 104 closes, under 104, two or three days out of four or four days out of five. That just says, uh-oh, not ready for tr prime time at all and probably go, can go down quite deeper. I don't see that right now. I think there's just enough strength to keep it in a steady sideways move. Start your engines. But don't get too carried away. Just start your engine. My next question that came in, let me just check here. I think I, I wrote it down. 
Uh, see if I did that, I did that, I did that. Okay. Whoa, whoa, I'm going too quickly. Uh, I'm going under. Okay. A little hard to read. Okay. So I'm going to do this because I got another question that came in. Okay. So I, there's a question of whether there's another particular stock, same area, would be a better fit. And I'm just going to say to you, let me just look at that right now. I see uh, different chart altogether. Intercontinental exchange. Two separate things entirely. I'll be back in a moment with the full time. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. .com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. So ICE, which is something completely different. It's Internet, Intercontinental Exchange. Just a very, there's a really bullish chart formation. To start a position here is real tough because it's had a spectacular move. Uh, if you had asked me a little earlier when it dropped down to 113.76, I would have said maybe a little nibble in this area here under 114 and maybe between 114 and 112. But now it's already given, it's spiked right back. It's, it's now only down a quarter. 
at uh, 117.25. Um, wow. I like this way better. But now, oh yeah, I'm going to say the same thing. If you're in it, and I suspect you might be in it, uh, just keep holding it. If you want to add to it, that would be a trading position right here at 117. But this one, I would give it no more than two points as a stop because if it does pull back again, it means that whatever helps it get back was just news. It wasn't it wasn't something tactile, something that it can really grab onto. But so far, it's acting very well. So uh, let me just do this because we're about to wrap up. Um, Dow is trading right now uh, up 37 holding really nicely. The uh, S&P is holding it really nicely. And I just wanted to show you here. Uh, so let me just do this. If after 2 o'clock, Dow is actually up 60 points or more, that's going to be a good sign. And if it takes out Friday's high, um, that'll be a good sign because it's still leg D and all the technicals are still strong. And you, unless you get this really bad, you know, the reason why I showed you the chart of the bad news cloud cover is that I don't see anything there other than on a purely technical basis, we're a little bit short term overboard. So that's what I'm looking at. Up your points after two o'clock, that's good. If it suddenly gives back and it starts to be down 40 points, it says, be careful, a little mild pullback. Let me just go to the SMHs as we go back. You're going to go to Steve Rose, great programming here at TFNN. Yeah, the SMHs are 41 cents, holding okay. Um, I think we're in for just a little bit of a consolidation. We'll see what happens here. But so 